Today we're going to review the new guideline for global strategy for asthma management and prevention just published May 6, 2025 by the Global Initiative for Asthma. This guideline was first published in 1995 and has been updated annually since 2002. This guideline was established to increase awareness about asthma among healthcare providers, public health authorities, and communities to help prevent asthma and to improve asthma management. There are 15 key changes in this guideline, so let's get started. To start off, the guidelines now include a new resource on the role of type 2 biomarkers, specifically blood eosinophils and fractional exhaled nitric oxide, or FENO, in asthma care. It highlights their role in the diagnosis, assessment, and management of asthma, as well as how these levels can vary. This variability is important for clinicians to consider when evaluating patients for type 2 targeted therapies. The guideline emphasizes the importance of assessing multiple external and environmental risk factors, such as air quality and their impact on asthma exacerbation and hospitalizations. In regards to extreme weather, the guidelines address the impact of climate change and extreme weather on individuals with asthma and that both high and low temperature extremes increase the risk of asthma exacerbations. Moving on to pediatric care, another important key change is that the diagnosis of asthma can be made in children five years and younger. The diagnosis is clinical with criteria needing to be met in three categories, which are a history of wheezing, no other likely cause for respiratory symptoms, and clinical response to asthma treatment. Another key update for children five years and younger are the updated treatment strategies. As of now, there are a few treatment options. However, there are several ongoing trials involving low-dose inhaled corticosteroids, also known as ICS, for Motorol. Now, IV magnesium is further supported for managing asthma exacerbations, while nebulized magnesium is no longer recommended. The new oxygen saturation goal for children is now greater than or equal to 94% with consideration of altitude or skin color. Next, lung function assessment remains as the primary option for diagnosis confirmation since the variability in symptoms and in expiratory flow are two main characteristics of asthma. To reduce confusion, the terms variable expiratory airflow limitation has now been replaced with variable expiratory airflow. Since lung function is variable in untreated asthma, airflow limitation may or may not be present at the time of assessment. Another key change highlights evidence reflecting that L elevated FENO often shows poor adherence to ICS therapy. It is also more effective to assess biomarkers after ICS has been initiated and common issues like adherence and inhaler technique have been corrected. From a personalized patient care perspective, the guideline emphasizes importance that patient-level decisions should take into consideration multiple factors such as a patient's comorbidities, biomarkers, practical issues, and patient views. In terms of treatment recommendations, updates show ICS for Motorol as a preferred treatment approach when available due to its strong evidence for reducing severe exacerbations and simplifying treatment with a single inhaler. Medium to high dose ICS long acting beta 2 agonist, also known as LABA, has now changed to medium dose ICS LABA. Fluticasone furate doses have been revised, and patients with difficult to treat asthma should be referred for specialist assessment without delay, rather than undergoing multiple trials of different add on treatments. When choosing an inhaler, the first priority is selecting the most appropriate medication and ensuring the patient can use the inhaler properly. Environmental impact should only be considered if multiple inhaler devices are available for this medication. Action plans have been updated based on treatment options. In patients using SABA-based treatment, increasing SABA can help relieve symptoms, but there's only limited evidence that raising ICS maintenance dose can reduce the risk of exacerbation. In patients using ICS for Motorol, maintaining their regular dose while increasing their as-needed dose has strong evidence for reducing the risk of severe exacerbations. The guidelines suggest avoiding excessive use of doses of SABA for initial treatment in clinical settings. And finally, investigations now acknowledge that some patients do not have asthma, but more so that their exacerbations and symptoms may actually have comorbidities. The assessment of type 2 biomarkers has been clarified with guidance to reassess low eosinophil and FENO levels if clinical circumstances change.
And there you have it. Make sure to check out the full guideline and other clinical tools from the Global Initiative for Asthma at guidelinecentral.com.